In this video, we're gonna be going through all of the major updates for Zoho Desk for Q1 of 2025. There are some big ones in here, kind of around Zia and additional AI functionality, as well as some improved reporting and dashboards that can be created that I think a lot of people are gonna like. So if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment if you've got any feedback, questions, or video requests. And as always, just head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help. So without any further ado, let's jump right on in. So here we are. This is just the Zoho Desk Q1 2025 update. Thought I would run through this in detail and just kind of highlight some of the big changes and updates that I think are most relevant. So it's going to organize them into these high ticket buckets here, but I'm not going to read all these one by one. Let's go through the updates themselves. So first big category, Zia for content generation and writing. I really like this. A couple things that they've done with Zia. So one, it's going to give you now kind of top level insights about a particular customer or ticket. So it's going to kind of be tracking all the various communications that you have with them to make sure that you get this quick little summary view into, hey, what's the general tone and what are some of the topics that are most relevant for this person? You've also got that same type of summarization inside of a ticket and a thread. So if you've got a ticket that's really long, right? Maybe you've been going back and forth with a customer for a long time. Maybe you're a manager who's plugging into a ticket 20 emails deep and you're like, good Lord, I just wanna know kind of high level what's going on here. You can now do that. You can go ahead and grab a quick summary view of that ticket just by using their AI tool. I've also got tone, language, and length management. So if I do go ahead and write a ticket response, I can have it change the tone, make it longer, make it shorter, or even translate between various languages. We've also got the ability to quickly just spell check and grammar check anything that we're writing up using Zia. So again, lots of people use things like Grammarly for this, but natively within Desk, now Zia is going to handle that for us, just kind of save one less application that we need to pull. I will say when I've used some of the spell check and grammar check tools in Zoho in the past, I have uh, disagreed sometimes with the way that they will rate certain sentences. So your mileage may vary, but it is nice to have at least the spell check component running natively. And then I would say the biggest one here that I see is the ability to generate content. So this is really that kind of support desk nirvana, right? Where an AI tool can actually write a response for you. One of the things that's the most important component when you're using the generate content functionality is that you've populated a really good solid knowledge base. If you don't have a good knowledge base in place, the AI is going to be pretty limited in terms of what it can actually write up for you. Because hey, let's say you have a ticket that comes in, they're asking about a refund policy. Well, you don't want the AI to just come up with a refund policy, right? You got to make sure that's actually the policy of your business, which should then be documented inside of the knowledge base so that it can accurately pull that and surface it to the client. So again, Generating the content is awesome, but I do just recommend making sure that at least at like a core policy and procedure level, you've got something in that knowledge base that it can pull from just for, uh, you know, sanity check, right? Make sure that nothing goes wrong. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the new reporting tools. So one of the big ones is transition and life cycle reporting. Basically, what this means is we're looking by tickets to see all of the various changes that have occurred over time for that particular ticket. So here we can see is, hey, we're looking at a life cycle of statuses, we're grouping it by a ticket, and now I can easily see from a reporting basis the time that each ticket entered and left any various status. So this is the type of data that you can look at in aggregate or look at for an individual ticket if something went wrong and understand like, hey, we were in that pending client status for a really long time. We should have followed up more with them, right? To get whatever we needed so that we could provide the service back to them. We've also got some new reporting and visibility just into agent availability. So people can really just kind of come in, log any of their time and availability into Zoho Desk. And so then we can see, hey, this is when they show up. This is the login time. This is the log out time. This is the number of hours and the total number of sessions. So again, just giving you some type of idea of when someone is at their desk versus not at their desk. One huge one that it, honestly, when I saw this, I, I thought this was already in Zoho Desk. They've now added the ability to include KPIs or key performance indicators as a chart type into the dashboards tool for Zoho Desk. These KPIs 
They're relatively simple. Normally, if I'm building a KPI for like a manager or an executive, I'm still going to want to use Zoho Analytics, just kind of process the data a bit more. But for day-to-day -day users, right, how many tickets do I get closed today? What's my average response time, right? Those kind of like right here, right now metrics can be visualized really easily in these KPIs and then shown to them so that they can get an easy kind of, you know, snapshot look into how things are going. We've also added a formula fields to Zoho Desk. Again, another thing that if you had asked me six months ago, are there formula fields in Desk? I might have said yes, but no, there actually have not been. So those are now added. These are essentially just a way to write a quick little formula. So either doing some math, doing a little bit of logic, like if this field is A, then show this number, show this value. Um, so you can get some pretty creative with the formulas that you run in here. They've got a ton of different functions. We'll have a link to this uh, Q1 breakdown that you can click through and see all of these down in the description below. While you're down there, go ahead and click that like button, leave us a comment, all that good stuff, I have to ask. Next one are buttons. So buttons are something that have not been in Zoho Desk before. A button is essentially a way to trigger a function or trigger a invoke URL. This is really common inside of something like CRM, where in a deal record, we might have a button that creates and sends a proposal. Inside a desk, they've never given us the ability to create a custom button. Now you can kind of get around this using a macro in a lot of cases, which almost is like a button, but the advantage of a button is just a wider suite of functionality that's enabled and then being able to display it a little bit more easily inside of a particular ticket rather than having to click through the macros menu. Quick one here, private extensions in custom modules. So if you are using your own extension, now those are not just restricted to contacts, accounts, tickets. You can now actually track those in any of your custom modules. Community module inside a desk, not everybody uses this, but you now have improved abilities to filter and sort that based on status. So if you are kind of tracking various topics or requests, you can group those into almost like a Kanban board of like how we're doing at satisfying any of these community requests. A few minor updates here. So bulk WhatsApp messages to contacts. This kind of fits in with some of their changes to parent-child ticketing. So if you wanted to select 10 tickets and send them all a message saying, hey, this has been resolved, you can now do that. And then you're now actually able to reply via email for instant messenger tickets. Next up are a bunch of inclusivity and kind of uh, security options. So Across the board, they've been adding a ton of accessibility improvements. So tab navigation, screen reader, keyboard shortcuts. This is just a really good thing to do in general. Um, even if you're not somebody who has an impairment, um, some of these are just nice to have. Like I like tab navigation myself, so that'll make me happy. Customer feedback forms can now be run in multiple languages. Minor, but really nice. Same with WhatsApp, that's now going multilingual. So you can have different versions of a template that are all under the same template ID, but you're invoking a language to send them out. That's actually a really clever way of doing this. The other option would be many different templates that are all hard-coded to a language. So I do really like that. Multilingual bots inside of WhatsApp, Line, Facebook Messenger. OTP-based login for the help center. So kind of getting into that security component. That's really nice. Again, not like your users are going to store anything super private in tickets in your help center, but it's just still nice to keep those locked in, especially if you're dealing with any health sensitive or security sensitive data through Zoho Desk. I would recommend just enforcing this to make sure that security is, is locked in. New ticket assignments and workflows. So we're now able to update a record in a custom module using a workflow. So it's kind of like those field updates, right? So no code required. You're just kind of dragging in an update record action, coding in, hey, what field I want to update? What do I want to update it with? And we're finding a lot of use for custom modules. So nice to see this get supported just so that you're not having to do like arbitrary custom functions to do that. Obviously, we love writing custom functions at Zanata, but kind of nice for a day-to-day -day user just to be able to do a field update, right? And not need to write a piece of code that's just updating one field. Always has felt a bit unnecessary. And then a big one, big, big, big one. Custom functions now actually have logging inside of Zoho Desk. So inside of CRM, anytime a custom function triggers, it goes into a log and I can see if it failed. That has not been the case inside of Zoho Desk. So now they're actually going to give us an execution log where we can see everything that's been going on. 
Couple updates across the board in the world of audit log management. This is the boring stuff, but it really matters when you need it. So audit log is now gonna track contact and account modules. Kind of crazy, it wasn't doing that before, but now we can actually see any changes that were made to those modules. So if somebody updated a bunch of phone numbers incorrectly, you could at least get an idea of what exactly happened. Detail view in the audit log, so more filtering, slicing and dicing, not having to do everything in a spreadsheet. And then next, a bunch of updates to instant messaging. So AnswerBot for chat conversations. This would be like actually inside of WhatsApp, inside of a messaging tool. AnswerBot, again, being a natural language processing tool that is reading what the customer sends in and then trying to match it against either knowledge base or FAQ articles. So you don't have to hard code a bunch of stuff. It's like, hey, create a good knowledge base and then the AnswerBot will do the rest. I really like the idea of integrating that into a messaging tool, especially if you're like selling on Facebook Messenger or using business messaging somewhere. I see a lot of value to that. Sequential routing of chats. This is essentially, hey, we're going to try Tyler. If he's not free, we're going to try Brett. If he's not free, we're going to try Josh, right? So just being able to set up those cues. AI assistance inside of messaging. So again, a lot of those things I was talking about earlier with the tickets, right? So summaries, sentiment, writing assistance, those are going to be supported inside of messaging as well. Similar update here. Generative AI inside of those chat sessions and guided conversations. So again, just you could have a structured route that you're going through in a guided conversation. Like, hey, they come in, they ask about product day. You route them to a place where generative AI writes something about product day and serves it back to them. So just being able to build this natively into a flow is pretty darn cool. I'm really excited to see just other use cases for generative AI inside of Desk and other Zoho apps. Moving on down, so guided conversations, again, just being kind of a mix of AI and human intervention for a particular chat, those are now going to be able to touch many other applications. So basically some pre-baked integration points if you're building a guided conversation. As an example, if we click into the Zoho CRM integration blocks, as a part of a guided conversation, I might want to create a record inside of CRM, right? That could be maybe a case record. It could be an RMA, right? If you had like a return that you needed to process. So you can actually now just bake those directly into the guided conversation flow. I will say it's a little funny that two of them are lead specific, creating and converting a lead. A lot of the times I think about a guided conversation more in like a support context where I would be dealing with an existing contact. So a little bit odd, but I do like the idea of being able to tie into other apps dynamically. So yeah, flow builders just getting better and better. Instant messaging variables. Really all of these here are guided conversation improvements. That's when you're seeing that GC. I think guided conversation is going to be a big focus point for Desk. I think it's a nice blend of using a couple different components from various chat tools, right? So you can kind of use a little bit of answer bot for those quick Q&A. You can route it like a Zobot to get it to the right person. And now you can also like tie in other applications as well as large language model responses, just all through that guided conversation flow builder. So if we were to take a look at that, really what this means is if we come into Zoho Desk and we have a guided conversation going, yep, that's the wrong place. We can basically come in and set it up as a flow that moves them through a set of steps in a defined way, but still gives us that ability to not fully force them down like a strict Zobot path. Marketplace, one big update there. So Zoho Desk now has a direct integration with Azure DevOps. That's really nice. You just might want certain tickets to essentially become like a work item. This is something that we've built custom in the past for DevOps and for Jira. But if you don't have to build custom, even better. Couple enhancements for the ASAP widget. This is kind of like a thing you would embed inside of an application. So voice to text search, callback functionality, basically meaning that we can see what they've interacted with in the past as we're suggesting new content for them to interact with in the future. And then more targeted content display. So if I have a specific forum post that I want to show in a particular place, or I want to highlight a ticket status on a particular page, we can just get a little bit more granular. Last but not least, we won't go, go through all of these. Bunch of mobile app updates. Really, most of these are just bringing additional things that are available inside of the browser tool into the mobile application environment. So nothing too major, but nonetheless, whenever I can do something on my browser, I want to be able to do it on a mobile device as well. So just more steps in that direction for Zoho Desk. Wow. 
Okay, we got through that pretty quick. Yeah, leave a comment down below if you find these useful. We do always touch on these in the CRM Zen show, but we can't always spend quite enough time kind of going through each of these articles, giving a quick thought in terms of all the various updates that come out with these quarterly summaries. So if you found this video useful, leave a like down below, subscribe if you want to see more, leave any questions, feedback, and video requests down in that comment section. And as always, my name is Tyler Colt, and I will see you next time.